Welcome to MTX Chess. This past week, 16-year-old Indian Grandmaster Ramesh Prabhu Pragnananda beat world champion Magnus Carlsen, becoming the youngest player to have beaten Magnus since he became world champion. I want to show you their game from the Air Things Masters tournament, but first, smash that like button. It helps me out and tells YouTube that more people should be watching chess videos. So it was Magnus with the white pieces, and he started us off with d4. After knight of 6, c4, e6, knight of 3, d5, knight c3, we get into kind of the classic queen's gambit declined. And here it was uh, Pragnananda's turn to move, and he played c5. This is the super sharp terrace variation of the queen's gambit declined. Here, um, there's a couple different options white has. White can uh, take right away, and uh, after, for instance, takes, takes, uh, takes, takes, this bishop can come out and uh, this nice pin and, and immediately white's putting some pressure here on this on this d5 square. So it can be a pretty sharp line. Magnus elected here to play the little bit quieter e3, just showing up his center. And after uh, knight c6, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop b5 from white. And here there's a couple different things black could do. Black could play their bishop out to uh, d6. It's a very logical move. The problem with that is that after the bishop comes out to d6, white can just capture here. And after uh, d takes c5, black has to waste another tempo with bishop takes c5. So uh, Prague plays the, the better move here, and he just plays c takes d4. And after e takes d4, we find ourselves in kind of the exchange variation of the, of the queen's game declined. After bishop d6 from black, castle kingside, castle kingside, both players just developing their pieces. h3 from Magnus, h6 from black, and just covering these important squares, very logical moves. Magnus decides to take over the open file. Here we got bishop f5 from uh, Pragnananda, a great move. This bishop's really nice, um, showing up this, this diagonal. Sometimes white will uh, try and get their queen on this c2 square in this, in this type of position, and the queen controls this diagonal. So it's nice for black to get their bishop there before the white queen can take control of that diagonal. Here Magnus strikes in the center with knight e5. And that's all right, black just continues with the development. Rook c8, bishop f4, rook e8, rook c1. You can see that these grandmasters are just incredibly efficient at developing their pieces, especially in the opening. So this is actually a position that's been reached before, and there have been there are a couple moves in this position. There are uh, examples where the pawn gets pushed to kind of harass this bishop, but here black played a, a new move for the position, and that was queen b6. And here Magnus decided uh, to go for putting pressure on black's queen side, so he played bishop takes c6, and after b takes c6, you can see how this pawn is becoming a little bit weak. Uh, it's, it's a backwards pawn, what we say in chess. A backwards pawn is when uh, there's a pawn when it either has no pawns on, on either of the files next to it or the uh, the pawns on the files adjacent to it are more advanced. So because this pawn is behind uh, this pawn in terms of how advanced it is up the board this is, and it has no, no pawn on this side, it's actually a backwards pawn. So it's, it's, it's a weakness. Here you kind of see the intent of giving up the bishop for the knight. Magnus plays knight a4. The queen's got to move somewhere, and so uh, probably was the queen a6, and here we get rook e3. And this is a great little move for Magnus, and a lot of times for intermediate level players, it can be difficult to figure out what to do with your rooks, especially in the middle game. Getting them off the back rank is always smart. This is a really clever rook lift. This rook becomes a very powerful piece. Uh, the rook obviously can come to uh, g3, and maybe at, on g3 you've got some ideas of the, the rook and bishop kind of coordinating together. Maybe you've got ideas of the queen coming in. So it's definitely some kingside attack possible. Uh, but also simply the rook coming over to to c3 and now we've got we'll have two rooks dubbing up in this pawn we'll have the knight coming on this pawn and the really only defenders of the pawn are the queen and the rook so you can see immediately that magnus is, is putting a lot of pressure on uh Pardonando just with this rook move um, black played knight e4 which i think is a great move taking away both the c3 squares and the g3 squares which are the two squares the rook would like to jump through Easy for Magnus, though, he can just push the knight off with f3, and so the knight retreats to g5, and now we get rook e c3. And so here we are again in that position, and here Prague plays queen b7. And the idea here uh, is that uh, Prague is getting ready to basically lose this pawn. Uh, the one thing that Magnus has to worry about is that if this knight takes the pawn, then this bishop hangs. So uh, Magnus plays the very logical move, bishop h2, so now that this bishop is protected, uh, on black's next white's next move they can capture this pawn on c6 and so in this position what do you do as black it looks like you're about to lose a pawn obviously uh this pawn can get a little bit vulnerable if the knight can get pushed off the square 
But some of the moves for black, for instance, are uh, f6, kind of pushing the knight uh, to that square with really nowhere else to go. You know, uh, maybe pushing the pawn, right? Those are all moves you can make. But in this position, Pragnodanda found the absolute best move in the position, and that is the kind of daring knight e6. And why is this a daring move? Because it, it literally uh, asks Magnus to just take this pawn and uh, to, to see if uh, Magnus can kind of roll with the punches here as uh, Pragnodanda prepares this just blistering kingside attack. So Magnus goes for it. He played knight c, takes c6, and this is actually a, uh, a bad move for Magnus. And so... Actually, the uh, the engine says that it's negative uh, 4.1 for, for black. So absolutely winning for black in this position. And unfortunately, uh, Pragnanada missed the, the game-winning move here. Uh, but the game-winning move is bishop takes h2. And after king takes h2, then the knight is coming to f4. And the threat, obviously, uh, you've got the threat of the knight coming to e2, forking the two rooks. And you also have the threat, the threat of the rook coming down. And putting pressure on this g2 square and there's really no way to defend that so uh just to give you an idea of how bad this could get for for magnus uh you know what would white do in this position why might I play something like knight back to try and block this rook but after you get rook exchanges uh this square then you get f6 so now the knight's got to move somewhere so knight coming to g4 so the rook gets to, to e2 no matter what and now what do you do is white there's no really way of defending um this pawn here if you try and defend with the queen uh, Black's perfectly happy to give up a knight and a rook to pick off the queen. So after queen b3, rook takes g2, king h1, get a queen trade, a takes b3, and then rook d2. And you can just see here, these pawns are super weak. They're about to fall. This pawn's about to fall. This knight is pinned down on the defense of this pawn. This is just absolutely crushing and winning for Black. So if you go all the way back to this position, uh, Prague missed this move where he could have kind of almost won outright, and instead he played knight f4. So uh, similar idea, opening up this file and get, taking control of the e2 and the g2 squares, but it just shows you how important those two moves combi those two move combinations are, especially the two move tactical combinations. So after knight f4, we get knight e5 from uh, white, again closing up that, uh, that file that uh, Magnus didn't want black to control. And at this point in the game, it's about even in terms of the, the computer evaluation. After bishop takes e5, d takes e5, we get knight d3. And so this is a great move by uh, Pragnanada. He's trying to just put pressure on this rook uh, and try to kind of screw up what Magnus has going in terms of uh, his doubled up rooks. After rook takes c8, we get rook takes c8, rook takes c8, queen takes c8. So now all the rooks are off the board. The game's simplified a little bit. We get bishop g3 from uh, Magnus and now d4. Pass pawns are made to be pushed. Pragnanada knows that and pushes the pass pawn. We get b3 from uh, from Magnus, basically shoring up this knight uh, and allowing the, the knight to uh, come back to this square if it, when the, whenever this knight moves. After queen c6, we get queen d2 from Magnus and king h7. Basically, Pragnanada getting his king off the back rank doesn't want to deal with any of Magnus's back rank checks that may come later in the game. After king h2, we get bishop g6, just shoring up that uh, little king fortress that Pragnanada has. And we get queen a5. What Magnus is going to do is Magnus is going to go try to pick up these pawns, develop two pass pawns on the queen side, and just march those down Prague's throat. We get queen c1 from Pagdanana. This is a great move. And after queen takes a7, queen e3. And at this point in the game, it was about even. You can see uh, Pagdanana has a lot more activity over by white's king, but Magnus has the benefit of having two pass pawns on the queen side. But Magnus blundered here and played the move knight c3. And obviously the pawn cannot capture the knight because the queen is uh, pinning the pawn to the black queen. But here, Pragnanada found the just fantastic, great tactical move, and that is knight f4. And uh, why is this such a great tactical move? Well, a couple reasons. First of all, this knight is under attack from the queen. And if you uh, capture, for instance, bishop takes f4, after queen takes, the king's got to move somewhere. And if the king, let's say, uh, moves to g1 or something, then we just take here and our pawn's just going to march down towards uh, towards queening. And, you know, we've got the bishop covering the c2 square. We've got the queen covering the c1 square. This pawn's going to queen. So that's no good for white. Um, if after this position, white tries to block with the pawn, well, we just get check. And after the king comes down, the pawn's coming down anyway. So it doesn't work for, um, for white. So capturing this knight is just really out of the cards. And this knight obviously has to move somewhere. Uh, and another problem is that if the queen comes here, 
uh, now we're going to be threatening checkmate on g2. So this knight is in a great position, the queen's in a great position, and the combo the queen and the knight are very powerful, especially kind of in the late middle game when there's some pieces off the board. So Magnus Fine is really the only defensive move. That's knight d1. And here we get queen d2. you got to move the queen to d2 and not to e2 because you need to keep an eye on this knight. After knight f2, really the only defensive move for... Um, for uh, Magnus, obviously in this position here, if you played like a throwaway move, black is threatening checkmate. So you, you've got to do something to try and block uh, black's control of this second rank. So after knight f2, we get knight e2. And now what is what is probably going on to threatening? So it's just full of tactics here. He's threatening the queen coming to e1 and then eventually coming to g1, and this would be checkmate. The, the knight would cover the escape squares and uh, protect the queen, and the queen would deliver check. So that's what Prague is threatening now. So Magnus plays h4, opens up kind of an escape square for his king. Prog uh, doesn't, doesn't care if the king has escape square, plays queen e1. So you can just see the queen and knight bearing down here. And after queen d7, basically Magnus trying to put some pressure on this pawn. We get just a wonderful, wonderful uh, tactical player from Pagnanada. Knight takes g3. And here in this position, you may think as white that you can capture back this, this knight. But let's say you uh, capture the knight. Black's going to have queen check. And where's the king going to go? If you block check with a pawn, you got check here with the queen, and after the king comes back, you lose the knight anyway. So you're not really winning a piece if you if you uh, take the knight. And then in this position, if the queen takes here and you decide not to block with the pawn, if the king comes over to h3, well, then we got uh, bishop f5 check, and this is a fork on the uh, the king and the queen, and this, this loses the queen, obviously. So uh, the queen and the game. So in this position right here, it may look like this knight is hanging, but it's really not hanging. So Magnus plays queen takes d4. We get knight f1 check. The king's got to come up to h3. And now we get knight e3. And so now this, this knight is under attack. And after queen b2, we get bishop c2 from Magnus. And now we see here that there's really not a good square for the queen. The queen cannot defend this knight. And really, no matter what happens, what happens, uh, black is going to be marching uh, really into um, into White's territory here in checkmating. So a fantastic game for Pagan and Ananda. He uh, really had a lot of tactical flair at the end that was, that was fun to see. This is a great game to show you how dynamic the queen and the knight can be to, if they work together in the late middle game. There are so many young players. I mean, we uh, you talk a lot about Alareza Feroja. Uh, this guy from India, who's only 16, and there are really a ton of other uh, fantastic 2600, 2650 level players that are very young. And so the future of chess is bright. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for uh, liking these videos, subscribing to this channel. I think we just hit 250 subscribers. I'm really overwhelmed by the support that this channel has gotten. So I really appreciate it. New videos coming every week. You won't want to miss it. I'll see you guys next time.